Hey, Jay. What? You hungry? Clearly. <laughs> what do you want for dinner? Ravioli with a steak salad. That's it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the gauntlet is set down. Gina wants ravioli and a steak salad. So, I don't know where any of the pots are. There's a, another thing that should be called cleaning, cleaning with Gina. All right, we're gonna get some water boiling and uh, we'll start on the, uh, the sauce. All right, so as far as timing goes, we wanna get the uh, pasta water rocking. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons of salt in there. Uh, no real science behind it. The Italians say it should taste like the ocean. What that means to you, I don't know. So we'll get this boiling. So to make the uh, brown butter section of this particular recipe, I'm gonna show you how that works. Uh, you can click the upper right-hand corner of your screen for the steak portion of Gina's request. So uh, what you're gonna need is we're gonna do this for, with some sage. Um, and this isn't the prettiest sage in the history of the world, but this is just what I have left over. I have uh, one shallot, a bit of anchovy paste, and butter. Well, this is obviously a butter sauce. So you're gonna need a but, uh, a, you know, a lot of butter. So uh, this is, uh, I would say, probably about a stick. I usually buy it in a big Amish roll. So I'd say you got about a stick. So let's head over to the uh, stove. So I've got a saucier heating up on medium, medium high heat. Right now we're at about 114 degrees. I think it's probably good to get our butter rocking in there. Let's see. I want to start this just a little bit in the bottom here. I'll pull this out because I actually do want to fry the sage a little bit in here first. So while our butter is browning, not to waste any time, I'm gonna cut up this shallot. So we're about two minutes in at this point on uh, about medium heat. So the way that brown butter works is there's milk solids in butter. So the difference between regular butter and say clarified butter, clarified butter has the milk solids removed. Butter in this way of just taking straight butter from them like a supermarket and melting it, you get all the milk solids. So. What you're doing is you're just caramelizing the milk solids and turning them brown, hence the clever term brown butter. So because we started this pan at a low heat, um, with the sage in there like this, it's uh, just kind of increasing the amount of oils that we're extracting from the sage. So Gina's mom, Patty, just got me this saucier. It's a very nice pan. 
shout out to Patty. Thank you for that. So right now we have a good sort of golden yellow happening here. I'm gonna take this opportunity to put just a squeeze of anchovy paste in here. And don't worry, you're really not gonna taste that if you don't like fish, which I don't. So take that as uh, take that as a sign. If you don't like fish, which I hate, if I put it in there, you can put it in there too. So you know, this is just one of those things that you kind of want to keep moving. You don't burned butter is bad. Brown butter is good. So I put the anchovy in here now because I want that, uh, I want it to dissipate and just incorporate into the sauce. So we're a few more minutes in and you can see that the center here is just starting to get brown. So I'm stirring occasionally with a whisk, just keeping my eye on it. This is definitely a sauce that you don't wanna walk away from. So this is what you should look like at about the halfway point. So we're getting pretty close on this. Um, I'm gonna throw my shallot in right now, just about a half a shallot. So remember when you are putting things in, um, any, anytime you add an ingredient to a, a pan, especially if you're uh, cooking it, it's gonna change the temperature a little bit. So right now, my uh, sauce, the brown butter sauce, is way ahead of where my water is at for boiling. So because we don't wanna have a burned brown butter and we're using semi-fresh pasta, the timing here is gonna be important. So right now, I put the shallot in because I knew that that would slow the cooking process down just a little bit. Um, and then I'm also removing it from the heat so I want to keep it moving just like this because I do want to cool it down so that it'll stop cooking. Because, you know, as soon as you take something off the heat, it's still going to cook for a while. So that's going to be a, a fine balancing art. But this is, this is what it should sort of look like. You know, you got to figure that it's going to cook more in the pan. So, yeah, we, we've stopped boiling. Let's see what our temperature is down to now. 220 degrees, but we're but we're losing heat fast, so we're okay. So when you're cooking fresh pasta, it cooks almost instantaneously. So, you know, when you're timing a dish, it's always important to have things done at the correct time, which I messed up. I wasn't paying attention and I didn't turn my pot on, so. You want a real world cooking show? Here you go. So this is good. I'm just gonna set this off to the side here for a second and uh, let my water catch up. In the meantime, I'm gonna grab another pot so that we can uh, get this incorporated when the pasta's done. Okay, so our water's at a pretty vigorous boil. And since this is only gonna take a minute or so to cook these, I'm gonna prep my pasta pan here. So we're gonna take a little bit of this brown butter that now looks like this. I'm just gonna take a spoon, and get this in the pan. Just like this. Okay, get that a little bit coated. Let's see what our temperature is here. About 176, okay. So I'm just using some spinach and ricotta ravioli. Uh, these are pretty much fresh. You can get these in the deli, at least in our grocery store, we can get them in the deli. The only bad thing about them is they get a little sticky like this, but it's uh, pretty close to fresh pasta. So what I'm gonna do with these is just uh, toss them in the old water here. So this is a 10 ounce bag. Generally, if you're cooking pasta, you want a quarter pound per person if it's a main if it's a main dish. So if four people are eating, you want a pound. So because this is a little less than a pound, and it's a side, 
just gonna cook the whole bag. So I'm gonna turn my heat on to high here for this pan. And then with fresh pasta, you know that it's done as soon as it floats to the top. Now the, the bag says cook for four minutes. Don't believe that, because you're gonna cook it for a little bit in the sauce here. So my raviolis are starting to come to the top here. Let's just see how hot we are here, because I want the butter to brown just a little bit more, 187. So I'm just gonna take a slotted spoon here and start bringing these over. Now you've got to be gentle with this because the raviolis will stick and then they will also break open. So we do have a good amount of the pasta water that went in here, which is a good thing. That's going to help the sauce thicken just a little bit. And then it's also going to make it creamy because we have some of the starch. So let's grab a little bit more of this, turn our heat down because now we're gonna want some of this, some of these shallots that are in here. So we're gonna just let the water, the little bit of pasta water that's in there just reduce a little bit turn our heat off. So I'm on an electric stove at the moment. So you know, as soon as you shut the heat off, uh, there is a lot of residual heat left. So that's why if you're used to cooking on an electric stove, sometimes cooking on a gas and then vice versa can be a little bit weird. So I'm just keeping my eye on these. We wanna finish, when you're cooking pasta, you always wanna finish cooking it in the sauce. You don't ever want to cook pasta all the way in the water because you want it to absorb as much of the sauce as you can. So I'm just keeping this moving so that they won't stick despite being cooked in actual butter. All right, so I just gave them a little flip there. Just get them a little crispy. Now we're gonna be good. This is time to plate. Okay, so to finish this dish, we're just gonna do a little bit of black pepper. And we're gonna do a little bit of nutmeg. I don't have fresh nutmeg, so this is just dried. We're just gonna finish this off with some of our crispy sage from the beginning. And there you go. Mm. It's good. It's hot. It's good though. <laughs> Gina likes it. <laughs>